In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Today we're looking at John chapter 6, verses 60 to 71. And more specifically, we're focusing in today on verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. And so the reaction that the Lord has had and what he's taught is that many of his disciples left him. They just didn't want to be with him anymore, did not walk with him anymore. It's very interesting because there is there is um, there's this reality that the Lord is longing for everyone to be in union with him. He is longing for all to repent and to return. But what's amazing is that he's also not changing the truth to accommodate the ego and the flesh and the thoughts and opinions of others. And because of this, many refuse to walk with him. And this is so important because sometimes we we strive to have numbers in our churches. We strive for full churches. We strive to have many people following. Uh, that was never what he wanted. His desire truly was that all would repent and be saved and all that all would live and return to him. He longs for union with all. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the whole world. He loved the whole world. But that doesn't change the truth of our need to repent. And not just to repent, but to conform to the reality and the truth of the kingdom. We see here that the Lord reveals a number of things in this chapter to the people and to his disciples that, that for example, that his body and his blood is food indeed. Well, this is offensive, but it's the truth. And people can't handle that until many of his disciples leave. He reveals that no one can come to him if, if the Father does not draw them in. This may be offensive, but it's the truth. And so people walk with him no more. And so he started off with a, a really big crowd of thousands of people. And by the end of the chapter, he finds himself alone with the twelve. And, and sometimes people would see that as a, you know, as a failure or as a mistake or that he's pushed people away. He hasn't. They have refused to conform to the truth that he's presenting. And that's okay. We know the rest of the story that by the end, the cross is the greatest offense where only one disciple remained with a few women at the cross. But that's okay, because the cross is the truth. The, it's the truth of the revelation of, uh, of God's love. Peter rebukes him when he talks about the cross and suffering. And he denies him. That's okay. The Lord does not change his course. The Lord does not backtrack and say, okay, okay, it's okay. You don't have to really eat my body and blood. Oh, it's okay. I don't really have to go to the cross. He just remains true. But, but it's interesting because the journey of walking in truth is filled with rejection. It's filled with suffering. It is not a popular way to live. And yet the Lord found himself almost completely alone at the end by the cross. And yet his heart, so filled with love, receives his disciples as though they did nothing wrong. And then he teaches his disciples to walk in the same way. And so many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. This also made me realize that, yes, we have moments in the day where we, we stand before him. We tell him, Lord, we want to see you. Lord, be merciful to us. We pray. We pray our psalms. We, we stand in front of him and we want loving union with him. But the moment we leave our prayer rooms or the moment that we enter into everyday life, as it were, we also walk with him no more. We no longer desire to be with him. Our only focus is 
to accomplish the lists of tasks that we have for that day so we have you know some sort of value in our society and in our culture and 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 so we're so task oriented or we're running to our our um, you know our little fetishes our things that make us happy or our lattes and our shows and and we walk with him no more till the end of the day where maybe out of guilt or maybe out of a sincere repentance we we may realize that we haven't walked with them all day and we just say oh yeah okay well i'll see you tomorrow or good night or so the key is the key of discipleship is first to conform to his truth to conform to what he has revealed to us of the truth and the second thing is to walk with him all day and not to leave him not to not to have moments of being with him and moments of just flat out not walking with him anymore may today be a day that all day you are enjoying his presence enjoying his truth and conforming your life to his truth and not trying to make the truth conform to your life have a beautiful day